Dear students, now we are going to discuss about direct and indirect band gap semiconductor. So the semiconductors can be classified into two types based on band gap. Based on band gap. Okay. So band gap means the gap between the valency band and the conduction band. Okay. So based on this band gap, the semiconductors are classified into two types. Semiconductor are classified into two types. So what are the names of the semiconductors? One is direct band gap semiconductor and another one is indirect band gap semiconductor. Indirect band gap semiconductor. Right? Semiconductor. So to understand this topic, now I am going to explain the energy momentum graph. Okay, I am going to take the help of energy momentum graph. So the electron and the holes in a semiconductor have energy and momentum. Okay, energy and momentum. So in quantum mechanics topic, okay, we have already discussed the energy of the particle will be related to the momentum. Okay, so K square is equal to 2Me divided by H square. So by seeing this, the energy and the momentum, the energy, the momentum depends upon the energy. So now I am going to draw the graph here. So energy will be present in the y-axis and the momentum will be there in the x-axis. Okay. So now the lower curve is called the valency band. The lower curve is the valency band. The upper curve is the conduction band. Upper curve is the conduction band. As we know well, the valency band is the lower energy and the conduction band is the upper energy. So in this case of direct band gap semiconductor, now you see here the electrons will be present and here the holes will be present. Now you see the electron and the hole will have the same momentum value. Can you able to see this? This momentum will be same. That means the minimum energy of conduction band, the minimum energy of conduction band is equal to the maximum energy of hole in the valency band. Okay, the minimum energy of electron in the conduction band is equal to the maximum energy of hole in the valency band. Now listen, the minimum energy, this is the minimum energy of electron in the conduction band is equal to the maximum energy of hole in the valency band. Maximum energy of the hole in the valency band. Both are having the same momentum value. So in this case, the electron recombination takes place directly with the hole. The electron jumps from the conduction band and it recombines with the hole in the valency band. So directly, okay, so the that means if the recombination takes place directly here. So that case it releases energy in the form of photons in the form of photons that is light energy in the form of photons that is light energy so this gap band gap is direct with each other that's what it is called direct band gap semiconductor okay direct band gap semiconductor for this this will be for some materials only okay for example gallium arsenide okay and then cadmium sulfide for this kind of materials uh, this minimum energy of uh, electrons in the conduction band and the maximum energy of hole in the valency band both will have the same momentum value so the uh, recombination will takes place directly that's what it is called direct band gap semiconductor. But when we come to the indirect band gap semiconductor, what will happen? You see this diagram. So this is momentum. And here energy. Okay. So the lower curve will be valency band. The upper curve will be conduction band. So this is conduction band. And this is valency band. Here holes are there. In conduction valency band holes, in conduction band the electrons will be there. Okay. Now by seeing the diagram itself, we can understand very clearly. This uh, holes in the uh, valency band are having very less momentum, and the electrons in the conduction band are having 
high momentum value this is high momentum and this is less momentum value so here how this recombination takes place actually during recombination electron should lose momentum okay it has to lose momentum it has to reach this hole so what it has to do it has to lose some momentum this much amount of momentum should be loosened by the electron first and then it will come equal to the momentum which is corresponding to the energy maximum of the valency band energy maximum of the valency band so now what happens to conserve this momentum to conserve this momentum it emits the energy that is phonons to conserve the momentum it emits the energy that is thermal lattice vibration so phonon is created in this case so the band gap is not direct okay the band gap is not direct so the energy electron in the conduction band has to lose certain momentum to reach the maximum energy of the valency band okay that's what here the momentum is conserved by the generation of phonons that is heat so we have to remember this so the uh, the, the recombination does not takes place directly by means of this indirect recombination that is through traps that is through traps okay so that is the reason this semiconductors are named it as indirect band gap semiconductors okay so the example for direct indirect band gap semiconductors are germanium and silicon germanium and silicon okay so here direct band gap examples are gallium arsenide okay cadmium sulfide etc so that means i explained this differentiation between the direct band gap and indirect band gap through this ek curve what is the name of the curve ek curve so e is the energy k is the momentum so by using the ek curve i explained the Uh, semiconductors but now let us see the differentiation between them okay so let us go to the next page now here direct band gap semiconductor semiconductor and here indirect indirect band gap semiconductor semiconductor okay so this that means direct band gap semiconductors are made up of compounds okay are made up of compounds so the compounds from the combination will be succane and sixth group elements succane and sixth group elements if you see in the periodic table for example in succane group cadmium in sixth group sulfide so the combination cadmium sulfide okay this is the combination of two elements okay this is one combination okay the next combination will be third group and fifth group element third group and fifth group element example is in third group if you consider gallium okay in fifth group arsenide so gallium arsenide okay or otherwise gallium phosphide like that okay so the direct band gap semiconductors are made up of compounds okay it may be either the combination of second and sixth or third and fifth that's what the direct band gap semiconductors are also known as compound semiconductors are also known as compound semiconductors right but this indirect band gap semiconductors are made up of elements single element only okay so that is mainly of fourth group element in the periodic table fourth group element in the periodic table examples are germanium silicon etc okay germanium silicon etc so it is made up of single element that's what indirect band gap semiconductors are also known as elemental semiconductor elemental semiconductor elemental semiconductor okay so now we have the first differentiation so the direct band gap semiconductors are made up of compounds examples i have given so that it is made it is named it as compound semiconductor indirect band gap semiconductors are made up of elements okay that's what it is called elemental semiconductor this is the first differentiation okay so next we will see the second point so here the second point is here the electron just now we have discussed 
okay so the electron hole recombination takes place directly recombination recombination takes place directly okay but in this case it does not takes place directly through traps it is taking place okay through the electron hole recombination uh, recombination through traps it takes place through traps that is the reason it is called indirect band gap okay here directly it takes place through traps it is taking place okay that is the second differentiation and the next one is in this case it produces the photon it produces the photons that is like so during recombination it releases energy in the form of photons but here it releases energy in the form of phonons so phonons are heat phonons are heat okay and then here the lifetime of charge carrier is less directly it meets right so the lifetime of charge carrier lifetime of charge carrier is less due to direct recombination due to direct recombination okay but in this in the another case the lifetime of the charge carrier is more why because through traps only it is taking place so the lifetime of charge carrier is more due to the indirect recombination okay and then this type of semiconductors are used for making leds laser diodes etc leds laser diodes etc and led means light emitting diode the diode is going to produce the light okay so which is related to the photon that's what so this type of diodes are used for making leds and the laser diodes etc and it is producing the heat okay so this type of uh, semiconductors are used for the manufacture of diodes and transistors diodes transistors transistors etc transistors etc diodes transistors etc okay so these are the difference between direct and indirect band gap semiconductor so i explained first with the help of ek diagram okay after that we discussed what are the differences between direct band gap and indirect band gap semiconductors uh, along with that i have given the example for that so here gallium arsenide and cadmium sulfide and here germanium and the silicon it is made up of single element okay that's what it is called elemental semiconductor here you see this is the combination of elements that's what it is called compound semiconductor so these are the differences we have discussed here and then what about the recombination directly how it is taking place and uh, through traps uh, it is taking place here photons are produced here phonons are produced so la charge carrier lifetime is very less why because the directly the band to band recombination takes place but here it through the trap it is taking place that is the reason it is the lifetime of the charge carrier is more here and this type of semiconductors are used for making leds and laser diodes and this type of semiconductors are used for making diodes and transistors okay you just to go through this if you have any doubt you can ask in the comment box so thank you everyone